All right, so last time we started working on our state machine. It cleans up our code quite a bit. It makes things a little bit more fancy. We even created a nice little method, meaning that we made it so that our code will just automatically run all of this when we say this. And we made it so that our system automatically updates our state with just one line. And all we got to do is set it up inside of all this, right? Now, one of our problems right now is that the game has no clue what to do when we're jumping. It has no idea when we're allowed to jump. Like, if I go back in here, you're going to see that we can do some pretty crazy things. Like, here we are. We're on the ground. We jump. Oh, wait, wait. We can still jump and jump and jump and jump. And we're falling. And, and now that I'm in the jump animation state, now if you look at my animator, you'll see that we're in two. It doesn't have a two. It doesn't have a jump animation. So it has, it's very confused right now. So we're going to start working on this. Uh, first thing first, we don't want the thing to actually run before it looks good, right? So we're going to try to make it so that when we push the space bar down, that it's going to actually, first thing we need to do is actually, uh, I didn't even do this earlier. We need to get it so that when we uh, push the button, it'll work right. So right now we are an input, get key down, we're got it hard coded for our jump, our space bar. We're gonna go back into the Unity. We're gonna go to edit. We're gonna go to uh, product settings input. We're gonna take a look at what the jump button actually is. It's called jump. It's actually a space bar. So that's good. And it's got a capital J there. You gotta take that all into account. Input dot get button down, just like get key down was. And we're gonna go jump. So when that button's pushed, we'll do the same thing. We're gonna take a test run at it really quick. This will use the input system instead. So if I ever decide to change what this button does right here, or I wanna add like a remote control, I can add things on there as that alternate button. We can do all sorts of stuff with that. And I hit the space bar and wow, it still works. That's good. All right, so let's go into the next step here. We're gonna go from this and we're gonna make it so that it actually does a little bit more. Um, so right now we have it so that, uh, that he goes into the jump state and then he can just do it at any time. Like if this button's pushed, it's gonna happen. Thing is, we need to make sure that he's actually you know, touching something, <laughs> the ground, <laughs> in order for it to happen. Like, who can jump when they're not touching the ground? So, if we go to the foreground over here, you see that it's not tagging. There is no layer on there. Collider 2D API. So, we're going to go to the Collider 2D API. And this is what you're going to use a lot. Now, I actually know the name of the script that we're going to be using. The name of the method, which is, by the way, the official name of anything like this that you can run even the set integer over here when we're running it from the animator those are all methods this method right here just assumes that we're running it from this <coughs> meaning that it's being run by the player controller right here and animator is this animator right here which is running the set integer right there those are all methods even this update function is a method uh, that just means that it runs whatever's inside of its nice little curly brackets wherever it's actually coded at. Okay. <clears throat> so, you can actually go right on here to the scripting UI uh, API, and it'll tell you what all its methods are. And you'll see here that we have a nice little cool is touching layers function here. Right? Now you click that, and you see, oh, what's that do? Well, it returns a boolean, aka a true or false, whether this collider is touching any collider on the specific layer mask or not. We can start to make this. So, first off, we want to make a layer for our ground. All of our foreground is on this foreground grid right here. So if we build a layer, you see it's on default. We're going to add a layer onto this. Let's just call this ground, right? So now, we go back to this foreground, we hit layers, we go ground, the whole game knows that this is on the ground layer now. And we can now script it in that if I am touching that, then I can jump, right? So let's see what we need here. So we go over here and we say, okay, so I need to check it with my Collider 2D. Problem is we don't have access to our Collider 2D. So let's make it. Let's go private. Collider 2D 
Okay. And let's go coal. We're going to go right into the start function just like we did before. We're going to coal equals git component collider 2d. Right? Let's see how that works out. All right, so I went ahead and got its Collider 2D from the player over here. It works, and you're like, what? But Alvin, it says Box Collider 2D on there. How's that making any sense? Like, that's a Box Collider. Well, Box Collider 2D and any other Collider 2D is of the type Collider 2D, so the game knows. I'm not going to explain that fully right now and how it inherits and all that, but it's there. Don't worry about it. It's uh, any type of uh, Collider 2D is... It has a bunch of things that are uh, basically as children, and we call them. They inherit from the Collider 2D, Box Collider 2D, Capsule Collider 2D, every one of those inherits, and so it works like that and runs the same functions. So, now we want to say, if you hit two of these AND buttons, which is uh, Shift 7, it'll actually, it actually counts as AND in the system, right? So, like, uh, they'll say, if this is true right here, this input jump is happening, and whatever over here is true, then we can do this. So both things have to be true. True, true. Cole is touching layers, which we looked up earlier. And then if you got to pass in a layer mass, uh-oh, how do you do that? We don't have a layer mass. Well, then let's make one. Private layer mass. And call it ground. And we have no way of passing this in in the start function. So what do we do in that case? We want to keep it private. So let's actually make it serialize field, right? Ugh. You set tag on there. That's a Unity specific tag right there, and it'll serialize this uh, field right here, right? So we're supposed to pass in that layer mask. And if I go over here, I hit my space bar as I'm going to the ground, and I hit my space bar while I'm on the ground, I'm never jumping. But if I change this to ground, and boom, I jump now, and I'm stuck in that animation, but it works. So, now the game knows, and you want to change this back to ground again once you get out, out of that play mode, by the way, it reverts all your changes. When you go from, when all your changes that you make while you're in play mode, and then when you go out of it, it reverts them all. So, change that to the ground layer. From now on, he can only jump when he's touching this ground layer. So, it'll only let these things happen there. Eventually, we're going to want a falling animation as well. So, what we're going to do here is we're going to make a falling state as well. And we're going to say if the, the rb.velocity.y, meaning my rigid body's velocity.y is less than. <clears throat> point one f then we're gonna go into the state equals state dot falling right and if state equals equals state dot falling we're gonna go into state and if the then we want to check if our collider is touching the layers Round. Then we're going to go into state equals state dot idle. What's all this mean? Okay, so right now we go into jump. Oh, we're going to go else if, by the way. Sorry, I should be in there. So right now we go into the jumping state. What we can only do that if we're touching the uh, ground, right? And our velocity goes up, we go up in the air. And then at some point, the y velocity will taper off and will actually start to fall back down. That's what gravity does. So at this point, it'll be less than 0.1f, and we'll have our state go into the state that falling. And at that point, we'll check again if we're touching the ground and we'll go back to idle. Why did I do this when we're not even doing a falling animation yet or anything like that? Biggest reason is because we're still touching that floor for a little while after we leave the ground, like after we hit the spacebar button we're still touching that floor for a little bit so like right here like there's a point where i'm still touching it okay 
So, as you can see, I'm stuck in that animation, but he goes back to the idle right there. Because once he hits the floor back again, he's actually going back to the idle animation because he's falling and then boom, he goes into idle because he hits that floor again. Okay? Next uh, next video, we're actually going to like start pushing, putting some things together. You're going to learn how to uh, create the animations for the jump and the fall. But please, if you like the video, please hit the like button below and also subscribe, hit that bell button so you can get the notifications that we are updating these tutorials and you can get more and more and more and more free stuff like this. Most importantly, leave me a comment uh, below just stating what you want to see, what you want from the next video series, what can be done better, what you wish was different, anything. Like I got thick skin, give it to me. All right, have a great day. Bye.